So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and I am featuring a series on um, musings from uh, a monk, everyday conversations from the essays of Jeremy Driscoll, a monk residing at Mount Angel Abbey in St. Benedict, Oregon. He wrote a book called The Monk's Alphabet, and I'm going through some of the selected essays um, just to give you a sense of his perspective on the way he views life um, through the walls of a monastery. B is for Baghdad. On the day the war began, I lay down on the floor, flat on my back, to pray. I stared at the ceiling as if looking for heaven, but I could not even get past that ceiling. Still, it seemed God was somehow present to me. Then slowly, I felt a force coming into my body, a terrible force. Suffering from people, suffering, was pouring into me. The frightened people in Baghdad and the other cities, especially the children, the soldiers on both sides fighting and dying, prisoners being tortured, people flagging for want of food and water. All this came into me more and more. I felt a terrible imbalance in my body. Anguish, restlessness, near despair, a sense of being cut off from God's love, a sense of the whole human race abandoned by him. From time to time, I would think that this is perhaps some sharing in Christ's suffering, his agony, I suppose I know enough of theology to have considered that as a possibility. And although such an understanding is an important guide, it really cannot help much inside the experience itself. Otherwise, how much of a sharing would it be? But at least I knew from Christ's example how to pray. And I have at least the theoretical hope that it will turn out as resurrection a hope that perhaps he was closed off from in the midst of his own agony. In any case, imitating his example, I do not cease to cry out, Father. In fact, I use all of the seven last words of Jesus on the cross to guide my prayer now. In daily living, it seems like it would be a good contribution to be beside others with a greater graciousness and kindness. I try this, but the whole world seems on edge, myself included. All the more reason, though, to keep on trying. I want to thank God for every day of life and live life's joys in humility. But also here I falter. I have a sense of not deserving to live so well while others are suffering so terribly. Yet this is in God's hands and not mine. If today, while war rages elsewhere, he gives me a peaceful day, food to eat, and good people all around me, then I want to thank him in all humility and cherish his gifts. I remember the example of Cheslov Milos, who continued to write lyric poetry during the worst days of World War II. I feel in me a terrible something that I sense as vibrating through the whole world, as gripping billions of human hearts, namely a sense that we are cut off from God 
and are left to our own worst instincts. But for the Christian, such a thought must be considered a lie. The very conclusion desired by the evil one who incites us to these wars. So I am trying to battle against that thought. If the content of Christian faith and hope can vibrate in me, then maybe it can spread to the countless others who are also under the terrifying spell. Doing good, this will be my resistance to what the war has unleashed. B is for Beethoven. When I was 19, I had a summer job as a cowboy in New Mexico. I went with three friends, none of whom, like me, knew much about serious riding and work with cattle. But we went to learn, ready for the adventure. We were trained in our new skills by riding alongside real cowboys, both boys and men who had been raised in the land and in that work. Riding home at the end of the day, there often would be long hours of banter. We were amused by the real cowboys, and they were amused by us. The banter would often include the rubric of insulting the horse that the other was riding that day. You were expected to defend your own horse and trash the other's. Some new horses had recently been added to our herd and were without names. We saw that these horses would eventually be dubbed according to what they revealed of themselves after several days of riding. And so our horses had names like Dime, short for Diamond, Dent, caught on barbed wire and so putting a dent in his flank, Flash, who was fast, and other such names, usually of one syllable. One of our new horses was an impressive bay with beautiful proportions of the black markings on brown that characterized the coloring. My three friends and I took to calling him Beethoven to honor his beauty, to suggest that there was strong music in his gait. The real cowboys heard with curiosity our three-syllable name for this splendid steed, and in the banter coming home one late afternoon. Beethoven's writer, clearly unaware of the great musician of the same name, asked me, why do you call this bay Beethoven? The muse of banter entered me in a flash, and I thought in a moment sweetly inspired to say, because a Toven is a no good horse and you're riding a bay, so it's Beethoven. He didn't know the word Toven, and fair enough, for as I say, as I say, it had only just then been invented. But he immediately responded, Well, it's a bay, but it ain't no Toven. For the rest of the summer, Toven was a word of our banter vocabulary. For we all came to use it in the varying contexts in which there was reason to criticize a horse. I often wonder if the word might still be in use in that region. I imagine some future entry in a dictionary. Toven, a flawed horse, regional only, Southwest USA, origin unknown. Well, thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure and share this with someone you think would be encouraged or inspired by it. And if you have a notion to try writing your own poetry, find my class over on udemy.com.